Welcome back to Allen High School's discussion of atomic structure and models of those atomic structures. Right now, we're moving into our second quantum number, and that's the quantum number L. Now, L is called a sublevel. So within each energy level, we will have one or more sublevels. It's kind of like within each home, you'll have one or more floors. So this is called a sublevel within your energy level. Now, this indicates the shape. That's the information it gives us, is the shape of that region in space where there's a 90% probability of finding an electron with a given energy, also known as an orbital. We're not quite at the orbital definition yet, but we're on our way there. So we have n, which is energy level. That gives us distance. It stays true. Energy that's pretty good, but gets a teeny bit mixed up. And then shape. Now, these have numerical values associated with them. We have solved a calculus equation to get to them. But at our level, we're not going to use those. We're going to use the letters. I mean, think about it. If everything was numbers, if your address was all numbers, if you know your address had to say that you lived in the 48th state in the United States, and that you live in this lived in the 63rd town that was populated, and you live on the 132nd street that was built in the fifth house, I mean, that's that's just a, a very cumbersome, awkward way of trying to describe where you live. So we use combinations of letters and numbers, and that. That's what we're doing here in our understanding of the atom. Now, the sublevels have a seemingly funny letters, but there is a reason for them, and they come from spectroscopy, the study of matter using light, should be an S, pet spectroscopy. Go P, I can't spell, but you get the idea. All right, there we go. Um, now, there is a way to remember that though, so hold on and I'll give you a nice little acronym. For now, we are looking at S, P, D, and F. And after that, they went by the alphabet, so they quit going by spectroscopy there. Okay, now, just like each home uh, has a, its own kind of variety of levels, whether it's a, a one-story home or a two-story home, or maybe it has a basement, so it's effectively a three-story home, or maybe people live in an apartment complex that has four stories. So different homes have different levels, and that's what we have here. If N is equal to one, the only thing L can be is S. So that's the only floor we have, so to speak. Now, if L can equal two, or excuse me, I misspoke, sorry about that. If N is equal to two, then we can have both an S and a P. So if um, N is equal to two, then L can be equal to S and a P. So if we have N equal to four and n equal to three, you notice that we add one each time. L can be s, L can be p, just like we saw before, but now we're going to add a d and an f. So this had a first floor, n equals two has a first floor and a second floor. n equals three has a first floor, a second floor, and I screwed up there, and a third floor. N equals to four, L can equal S, P, D, and now there's the F. My mind got a little ahead of me. I'm so sorry about that. So make sure you don't have F for this one. There is no N equal to three and an F. There we go. Now, do this in class. I'm gonna do this on the videos. It's life, sorry about that. So that's how we get our L values. And here's a trick a student came up with for remembering those. The order at first is stupid people die first. So that's how we can get our S, P, D, and our F, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and take a look at some of the shapes of these. You're going to have a way that you can, we're gonna fill in a chart in just a little bit to, that's going to help us understand 
how all of these things fit together. But for now, I just want to give you a chart. Now, this sphere represents S. So this would be an S. Now, if we have a 1S, it's going to be a small sphere. If you add a 2S, you're adding a bigger sphere on top of that. And then if you add a 3S, that sphere is going to be bigger still. And for atoms, these lay right on top of each other uh, in a sense. And so you'd have not rings. I know it looks like rings. Please don't see these as rings. But maybe if I color them in, you won't see them as rings. <laughs> okay, these are regions in space where there's a 90% probability of finding an electron with a given energy. Not rings that electrons move around. Now the P is looks like a dumbbell shape. And so the 2P, remember we don't have 1P. So the 2P would look like this, this dumbbell. Don't worry about the fact that there's three of them. Just focused on the shape right now. In the next video, we'll talk about how many there are of each of these. So that's a dumbbell shape. And as we get to 3P, they actually get bigger, further from the nucleus, and a little complicated. I'm going to show you a really cool website on that. Now then we get to the D's. This has to be at least a 3D because remember, we do not have, well, I say we, atoms, electrons don't move in a space that would be defined by 2D. Okay, it's too close to the nucleus without giving them enough uh, space to prevent repulsion. Now this looks a bit like a clover leaf. Can't quite tell it from these pictures, but that's these are a little bit of a clover leaf pattern in there, except for this funky one in the middle. Okay, now these are defined by complicated mathematics, so you just have to recognize them. You're not going to have to draw these D's. Now the F's get funkier still. Now again, remember we can only have a 4F. The mathematics doesn't allow a 3F. And the reason the mathematical, mathematics don't allow it because it's not physically reasonable for the electron to be that close to the nucleus and also that close to bunches of other electrons. So this would have to be 4F and they get wackier and wackier and I'll show you some cool pictures on that. But you should at least be able to grasp this, that S sublevels have a spherical shape and P sublevels have something like a dumbbell shape, kind of like um, maybe what you, uh, you're lifting, if you're lifting weights or, or really, I think it's more elongated and you would see maybe like an infinity sign and that was really a pitiful one, I realized, but an infinity sign or a figure eight, okay? So you should be able to recognize those types of shapes. Now I know this video is getting a little long, so I'm going to stop it right now. And in the next one, we'll add the next quantum number. But until then, this is signing off.